We had a ton of rain last night, so we'll lay this out and let it dry before we put it in the smoker. We'll go ahead and feed the pigs while that stuff dries. It's kind of a process to get into this pen, put the food up there, then open the gate. I think I'm gonna build something inside to where I don't have to go inside every time. They're acting like I haven't fed them in a week. They're biting my foot. Anything they can get to, my goodness. I bet y'all want some stale cereal. Or maybe some dinner scraps. I don't know if he'll let me do it or not, but Applewood, this brown one, has actually gotten pretty friendly. Yeah, so that's actually a huge improvement. It was not long ago that he wouldn't let me touch him at all. Of course, he could just be distracted. The other one, Cherrywood, won't let me touch him at all. But, you know, the same thing, I, I, hate, to get, I hate to get attached to him, you know? Y'all just hang out and grow hams, all right? It's your only job, grow hams. This is the barrel that's got their dry feed in it and I like to keep a bucket of corn in here and what I'll do is just take a few handfuls of this throw it out there with them and they love to love to it's like an Easter egg hunt for them they love to uh, walk around and find this stuff Right, I think this should be this should be good. It really wasn't all that wet to begin with, just a little bit. If y'all have got pine trees or pine straw available at Home Depot or Lowe's in your area, that's really the best bet for smoker fuel. That's some really good stuff. Pack it really good and it lasts a very, very long time in the smoker. It's really cheap. So this time of year is really critical for your bees in a lot of ways because this is the time of year that they're preparing for the honey flow. And in my area, that's gonna be happening here in probably two or three weeks or so, the beginning of the honey flow. Today is March 31st. That usually starts around mid to, mid to late April, somewhere along in that area. And so what they're doing right now is they're producing brood. They're producing new bees. And that requires a lot of energy. It requires them to eat a lot of the honey that they had stored up from last year. And no new honey, no new nectar rather, is coming in right now. So there's a very good risk of your bees starving to death. So this is the time of year where you have to keep a good check on the weights of the hives. If you can't open the hives because it's too cold in your area, you can kind of lift the back of the hive and see if it's still heavy. And if it's heavy enough, you might not have to feed. But if it's not heavy enough, you might have to do something. And if you're in an area where it's very cold, you might need to make some bee fondant. Google a recipe for bee fondant. It's basically a sugar cake you can put right directly on top of the winter cluster. And they'll be able to eat it from the bottom and that might just save your hive. In my area, it's way, way warm enough and has been warm enough for several weeks now for me to feed just straight sugar syrup. And this is the way that I like to do it. This is called a board feeder and it's probably one of the simplest simplest ways to feed your bees it's not the best way because it could encourage robbing behavior I really haven't had a big problem with that amongst my hives but it could encourage rob robbing behavior between your hives so make sure you keep a check on it all it is is a boardman feeder it takes a mason jar and in the lid i'll show you later there's holes actually I, I put a slit in mine because I want them to get it as quick as they possibly can um, that's just kind of how I do it. A lot of people keep the small holes in there so they can eat it gradually. That's just the way that I do it. So that's probably the simplest way to feed your bees. Another great way to feed your bees, actually this might be the simplest way right here, is communal feeding. If you want to communal feed your bees, you can just basically make yourself a uh, large communal feeder. This is just a five gallon or a two and a half, three gallon bucket that I took the lid and made a whole bunch of holes in the top. 
and you can put this upside down with sugar syrup in it, make sure it doesn't leak, and uh, put this somewhere on top of a fence post or on saw horses or wherever, and they'll come and they'll, they'll, they'll attach themselves to the bottom and they'll drink the syrup out of it. And it's communal because all of your bees go to that one spot. Uh, make sure it's 100 yards from your hives because it could also encourage robbing behavior. The most secure way to do this to feed your bees this time of year or any time of year is these in-hive feeders. These do not encourage robbing. Um, they're probably the least convenient because you have to have to open up the hive every time that you want to feed them. But these are great. These are from Mother Load Products. They're made in the United States, which is nice. And I use all medium boxes on my hives and uh, these replace two medium frames and they hold like a gallon and a half or something like that, I think, a piece. So lots and lots of syrup can go in these. And uh, they come open like this, but you can also purchase little ladders. There's a top right here and they've got two little holes here. And in those holes is a couple of ladders and the bees can go down those ladders, get their syrup and come out. And this right here is the best way to do it with those little ladders because this way, even though the sides of this thing are textured, you're going to have some bees that drown in this. So if you're going to use this, if you're going to try to save a dollar by uh, not getting the ladders for this, make sure you just put something in here that floats because the bees are going to need to have something to grab onto so they don't drown in the syrup. So sticks, corks, something like that, just something that floats so that they can get out when they need to. So having said all of that, let's open up this hive and I want to show you all kind of what they're doing this time of year. You can probably see in the background there some hives that are kind of laying around in pieces. I had some dead outs over the winter and it was because of um, basically neglect. I got so busy with things last year that I just kind of put the bees on the back burner to some degree and as a result not, of, not all of them made it through the winter. I hope they'll let me do this. We had some rain last night and they are acting just a little bit testy still. I've already taken one sting to the palm of my hand. All right, so right here we can look at this particular frame and I can see uh, there is some brood in here. There's some drone brood. See if I can differentiate it for you. We got some drone brood over in this area. We got some worker brood. I believe that's worker brood. They're kind of fat on the ends, but I believe that's worker brood right in that area. And there's some stores over here. And I'm pretty sure that these stores, if you can see that, it's pretty shiny. Pretty sure that's just the sugar syrup that I have been giving them uh, so that they can make it through the winter or in the spring season. And uh, basically the same story on that side. Looking pretty good so far. Let's go down another box and see what's going on. I had somebody ask me on a comment, if you're wearing that suit and not wearing gloves, for goodness sakes, what's the point? Well, the point is wearing those gloves, those big thick gloves, uh, makes, your, makes your manual dexterity just basically zero in these hives. And it makes them a lot angrier when you're banging their hive around because you can't hold them right. So I can kind of see from here that we've got a lot of good brood going on in this particular box. So let's pop out one of these frames and see what it looks like. Oh yeah. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful right there. So you can see we've got a great pattern. She is laying a very nice pattern in this box. You've got a nice, what you could call a rainbow pattern, I suppose. You've got the brood that goes all the way across here. Most likely would have been stores out in this area at some point. I think this box, it's possible that I put this box on here pretty recently, actually. But I know it's very difficult to see, but she's actually laying brood in uh, around these cells, these outer cells. So as soon as 
as soon as these eggs are hatching or these bees are hatching the queen in here is replacing the egg in those cells so great healthy queen in here growing a really nice pattern a very very healthy hive Forgot to mention it, but also make sure your mite levels in your hives are low because that is uh, certainly going to affect a lot of things. There's a certain virus that exists in beehives called deformed wing virus, and it exists in there naturally, but mites uh, tend to spread it uh, in a very, 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 very big way. And uh, the more mites you have, the more disease you're going to have this time of year. Uh, the brood is exploding. Uh, lots and lots of new bees are being produced, which creates a perfect situation for lots and lots of new mites to be produced. So you can have a great hive one month, and the next month it is just on the downhill, downhill slope because of those mites. Oh yeah, look at this. I'm gonna to try to get some good close-ups of this particular frame. Man, she is doing such a nice job in here. All right, I hope that y'all can see what I'm seeing here. I know that shadow of the camera is really annoying, but it's about the only way I can do this to get some sunlight. So right out here on the corners of the frame and actually in the middle as well, we've got some of this right here. This is called bee bread. That's pollen that the bees bring back. They pack it down into the cells and they let it ferment for a while. And that's the protein source that they use for raising brood. Then we've got some capped cells right here. And uh, actually there's a bee right there. Oh, where's my finger at? Oops. there's a bee right there that's actually hatching so that's pretty cool so we get closer to the middle we've got some bee bread we've got some more brood going on here and as we get along over here I know y'all probably can't tell oh maybe you can you see the white in the bottom of those particular cells that is these cells right here this is some really bad camera work these cells right here, that white is new brood in various stages of development. Now this frame, you might be looking at it and saying, well, that's kind of a strange pattern she's laying there. Is there something wrong with the queen? Well, this is actually a frame of very old brood. And what I mean by that is most of it's already hatched out. You see this stuff in the middle. It's, um, won't, it'll probably be a two or three more days and it'll be hatched. We saw one over here that was in the process of hatching. These right here have just hatched. And I can tell that because there's eggs in the bottoms of those cells. There's also eggs in the bottoms of these cells right here. So it almost looks like a spotty pattern, but as soon as the bees hatch, the queen is laying new eggs in those cells. Let's look at another frame. I can't tell that wind is blowing like crazy today. This is probably going to have to be the last one that we look at because I've had them open for quite some time. They're actually being pretty patient with me, but I really don't want to push my luck. I'd love to show you all the queen in this box. Going back to the mite treatments, there's a few ways you can check for mites. You can do an alcohol wash, which is half a cup of bees, and you just wash them out in alcohol and dump the alcohol out. Of course, by that way, you just kill all of your bees. Oh yeah, look at that one. So we got, actually, this is probably the prettiest frame so far. Right there in the middle, we've got unhatched brood. I know it's tough to see, but right here along the outside of the unhatched brood, we've got brood that's hatched and it, she's um, already put eggs back in those cells and got brood in various stages of development. But this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful frame as well. I wish I could find her because she's a, she's worthy of worthy of notable mention. She's doing such a great job. She can also do a powdered sugar shake, which is 300 bees or half a cup of bees in a mason jar. Shake them up with powdered sugar, leave them in there for a minute or so, and then shake the powdered sugar out through a screen and count your count your mites. I've started doing just the drone brood check. You find some drone brood in your box, pick it out and count the mites count out we'll find about 10 drone pupa and if you've got mites in there just count the mites on those 10 see how many in 10 you've got you probably have to google it to see how many per 10 is bad because i've forgotten those numbers i feel like i've tried to pack a lot into this video feeding bees mites brood bee feeders dead outs checking for mites can add one more thing make sure you put your boxes on kind of in the same order they went in there's a certain some certain times where you can swap boxes to um, get a good clear box up on the top for honey production but when you're dealing with brood just put it back kind of the way you found it because they put it that way for a reason this top box here has got a fair amount of weight to it that means the food that i've been giving them they are 
storing it and uh, they're really not in danger at all of starving at least not right now i mentioned earlier this time of year is the time of year where they consume quite a bit of stores so you have to keep a watch on them so this is the way that i do my lids here when you get these from uh, if you get like a store-bought lid or something like that it's just going to be a solid lid with maybe I don't know 10 or 14 very small holes out here and I like to put a gash in it or a slit in it like this with my hive tool because really my concern is that they get the syrup as fast as they can get it and uh, you know be done with it so that's why I do this it works fine the other way as well but just consider if you've got a huge hive of bees and they need syrup and they need it fast 14 tiny holes is not going to get enough syrup up in there as fast as uh, they probably need it at least that's the way that I think about it when I put these down in here I like to invert it right over the feeder get some of that syrup in there so that the bees know that there's more in there and they can find it very very quickly so guys that's going to do it for this video i hope that y'all enjoyed it i'm going to leave this suit on for the very last part of this video because their patience for me is, is really wearing thin right now so this is really the time of year again that you need to keep a check on your stores and your beehives because uh, it's, it's a pretty heartbreaking thing when you come out and you find that all of your bees have starved to death and that was totally a preventable thing so um, especially this time of year because they're making lots and lots of brood and they're using a lot of the stores and they're not getting any new stuff in they won't be at least in my area for another two or three weeks so um, this right here is some good insurance for um, you can see the bubbles coming up they're sucking it down as quick as they possibly can so this jar will be gone by tomorrow at this time because they will have it's a good strong hive they're drinking it down as quick as they possibly can and uh, this will help me sleep better at night knowing my bees knowing my bees are getting some uh, getting some food in so at this point I've got five hives um, I'm sorry I've got six hives one of them is kind of struggling and I hope to get a good honey harvest this year I mentioned earlier that I had some dead outs over the winter and early spring which was kind of a shame um, but you know what it's okay it's really okay with me because I'm trying to I'm trying to slow down I've got a lot of stuff a lot of irons in the fire so a few less things to maintain is, uh, is okay with me but anyway hope you all enjoy the video and I'll see you on the next one